Alrighty guys, I'm about to hit play on Star Wars Visions. I do not expect this to affect me in any way. Yes, transfer $10,000 into the main account because we're buying a lightsaber katana. It's a katana, but a lightsaber at the same time. Don't you understand how important that is? What's going on you guys, James here with another real review and today I'm diving into Star Wars Visions, the latest series on Disney Plus in this Star Wars universe. Guys, it is going to be so much fun to finally talk about this because I've been itching to review this series. A huge thank you to the team over there at Disney Plus for giving me the chance to watch all 9 episodes early for review. Now if you don't know much about Star Wars Visions, this is just an anthology collection of very short episodes no longer than 15 or 16 minutes long in an anime style set in the Star Wars universe. So these are very unique stories guys and there's a whole lot to love here But before we get into my review if it is your first time here at the channel Welcome to real James where I talk about movies and TV like this all the time So you're not gonna want to miss out go ahead and hit the big red button below subscribe to the channel and tap on that bell Y'all and hit the thumbs up button if you are a big fan of Star Wars and everything that's been coming out on Disney Plus because there's a lot to talk about and we got so much more as the year goes on guys and also get loud down below when you do watch this show on the 22nd did you love it did you hate it are you in the middle and which episode is your favorite because at the end of this review yeah i'm gonna rank every single episode Alrighty, y'all so let's go ahead and get started with what i loved about star wars visions so right off the bat guys i was just in love with the unique storytelling here from episode one i already knew this was going to be a journey unlike anything i've been on in the star wars universe because first of all i've never seen Star Wars set in this Japanese Edo period where all the samurai are around and I thought episode one was fantastic actually and that's the one episode I think that is based on some of this Ronin comic series that I've been hearing about if I'm wrong let me know in the comments below but man the unique art style and not just episode one but in every single episode really was a treat not only for Star Wars fans but just for fans who love anime and I really appreciated that none of these stories were connected so each time I hit play on a new episode it did feel like a fresh journey with some characters to either love or hate. And what's really cool is that each episode was produced by a different company. Some kind of duplicated, you saw it a couple times like Trigger, but the first episode for example, Kamikaze Duga, uses this old time manga style and I was like, well this is stripped literally from a manga and I thought it looked really cool and I really appreciated the fact that each episode was very unique for the story it was trying to tell. Like for example, in episode 6, Science Saru generated a very playful episode. This is definitely the kid-friendly episode, and the anime style was reflective of that because it was very easy to gravitate towards. It was nice on the eyes, and it just looked fun. But then you look at episode seven, which Trigger was responsible for, and this episode was dark, it was grim, but it fit the story it was trying to tell. And guys, when episodes are good here, they're really good to great. I mean, I had a blast with some of the stories they were trying to tell, and I'm not gonna lie, there were a couple of episodes here that I could have seen turned into a feature length film or just a short miniseries. And the one episode that jumps to mind when I say that is episode number five, The Ninth Jedi by production IG. And no, I'm not talking about Instagram. But man, this episode had everything that I wanted and so much more. It has great characters, awesome character moments, and a really solid story that I really kind of wanted to see flesh out in this universe because the galaxy is unbalanced. You have the Jedi who are pretty much extinct and there's one man trying to bring back that Jedi Order and then you have a young girl named Kara who is wonderfully voiced by Kamiko Glenn and what she does is essentially bring the lightsabers and try to help get these Jedi equipped to fight the Empire fight the Sith and it is just mind-blowing how engrossed I was in this small sliver of the Star Wars universe. And then you have some episodes that are more style over substance, like episode number three. And episode number three is titled The Twins for a Reason, I won't tell you exactly why, but I did think that it was interesting to see how beautiful it looked and the story was lacking, but even when there are moments like that in Star Wars Visions, I feel like the style is good enough to keep me intrigued for the most part. Now, some episodes are an exception to that rule, but I will say that for the most part, I was really in love with exactly everything I was viewing here. To me, nothing looked awful and everything looked really beautiful and captivating. And another thing that captivated me, honestly, guys, was the score. Now listen, y'all, nothing can replace John Williams' epic Star Wars score across every trilogy that we've seen on the big screen. But here in these episodes, I love the fact that there is this Star Wars identity to the score and compositions through each episode. But for example, in episode one, where it's set in Japan, you get instruments that really allow you to 
reminding yourself, oh my god, wait, this is a Star Wars episode set in Japan. So there are different instruments that really allow you to feel so much more, I guess, engaged in the story. And sometimes the score is a main character where it's much louder than anything else. But I do think that the anime style just it is like a very good mixture. So it's almost like Star Wars and Star Wars Visions was bound to happen eventually, especially considering the original trilogy being rooted in a lot of Japanese cinema. And if you are a Star Wars fan, I think you're going to really enjoy some of the more stereotypical Star Wars moments. And what I mean by that is when I heard characters say, may the force be with you, I wanted to cry, okay? It was so amazing to hear that because these are characters, especially in some episodes like episode 5 again, where you get so invested in the characters themselves and the relationships they build on screen. So there are those tropey moments where you understand the story's turning one way and it is Star Wars, so they need to remind you of that, always mentioning the Empire, always mentioning the Republic. But I really loved how they were able to give fan service and it didn't feel out of place. Alrighty guys, so now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about what I didn't like too much with Star Wars Visions and what I didn't think worked all the way through. And it starts with the voice acting. Now, listen, I need to preface this section with, I watched the English dub. I would have much preferred the Japanese audio track with the English subtitles, but for some reason, I wasn't able to access the English subtitles when I switched over to the Japanese track, so maybe that was an issue with the screeners I was given, but I ended up saying, you know what, let me cut my losses and just dive into this with the English dub. And for the most part, there were some episodes that lend themselves very well to the English dub, like episode number five and even episode number seven with Jordan Fisher voicing one of the characters named Dan. But then there are some other episodes where I thought, oh gosh, the Japanese track would have fit a lot more, like episode one. And I'm not here to say dub over sub or sub over dub. I know that is a huge argument in the anime community, but I would have much rather listened to the Japanese voice cast for the majority of these episodes because it would have given more of an impact. I think that the English dub, there is a little bit of authenticity lost, especially when you're engrossed in the anime style and in the universe that they're building in this world. And then all of a sudden you hear English. And for me, it feels out of place to a degree, even though I know I am American, but I would have much rather listened to that Japanese voice track just to get a little bit more of an impact from episode to episode. But guys, there were some standout voice actors here on the English side of things, like Kamiko Glenn as Kara in episode 5, and then you even have Karen Fukuhara, who actually might deliver the strongest performance in this series. In episode 4, she plays a Jedi, and I'm not going to tell you anything more than that. But what I will tell you is that episode 4 was one of those episodes, starts off a little weak, and it ends with a bang. It just continues to get better and better, so stick with it because, man, there's something about the voice acting and some of these episodes where in English, I thought it fit perfectly. So yeah, there's still a lot to love about the voice actors here. But outside of the spotty voice acting due to the English dub, I think that there is an issue with pacing here. Now this is an anthology collection, so again, each episode is different, so I'll judge them individually, not collectively, because none of the stories connect. However, there are some episodes where I felt the pacing was plaguing the experience. And I immediately think of episode 8, which had an anime style that did remind me of Cowboy Bebop just a little bit, but this episode had a very strong foundation. Unfortunately, the way it was paced made me not really connect with any of the characters. And not only do we get that in episode 8, but we get that a couple of different times as well throughout Star Wars Visions, where I feel like the episodes, yes, they're short, but boy do they breeze over some very important moments to where I almost feel disconnected from the stories. And and like I mentioned earlier, when these episodes are good, they're good to great, but then there are moments where these episodes are bad, and guys, when they're bad, oh, they're pretty bad. And immediately I think of episode 6, and episode 6 is, like I said, the more playful episode here where the tone is much more geared towards kids, and there's nothing wrong with that, I'm not the demographic for it, but what I will say is that I found myself to love some of these more joyful episodes, this one just never really clicked for me, and honestly I think it's because the story was just very generic, and the thing is, a lot of these episodes, and not a lot, but just some of them at least, have uninteresting stories that just I didn't care for. And I'm also looking at episode two by Studio Colorito, who you might know, uh, they worked on A Whisker Away, which we reviewed here on the channel, so I immediately recognized their studio name. 
but man, there was a good story somewhere in there, but I didn't think that the episode worked at all. And it's a shame because we do see a very familiar bounty hunter in that episode, but my goodness, I really thought that this story just had nothing to it. Nothing happens, and for about 12 to 15 minutes, I just felt incredibly uninterested. And that's the thing guys, these stories here essentially have to deliver something in the first five minutes for me to be really interested, and most of the episodes did that, but for the ones that didn't. But guys, I don't want to act like I didn't enjoy Star Wars Visions because even in the face of those negatives, I still think this is a strong enough series to appease both Star Wars fans and fans who just like a new take on the Star Wars universe. Because yeah, there are some fans out there that just don't care about anything outside of the movies, but I do think if you give this a shot, you'll eventually start to love and see how these stories are just so wide, they're vast, and they're incredibly unique, and they fit the tone of an anime, right? So I do think that Star Wars could work in an anime, and I want to see a full series that has cohesive storylines that connect to one another, but for now, Star Wars Visions really did wet my appetite and I loved pretty much everything that we got here. And y'all, if you do enjoy lightsaber fights, trust me, there are some amazing ones here like in episode 1, episode 5 even, and I did love episode 7's lightsaber battle the most. But did I love episode 7 the most? Now, okay, let's get into the episode ranking because I cannot wait to tell you which episode was my favorite. So we're going to start from my least favorite to my most favorite episode and Star Wars Visions. Again, nine episodes, so not a lot to get through, but let's start with my least favorite, which is episode number six. That's the childish episode, the one I didn't care for too much, so of course, that with the uninteresting story wasn't really gonna top my list anyway. And then after that is episode number two by Studio Colorido, and again, I thought the episode had a unique story at the beginning, and it just never really capitalized on that as it went on. Then you have episode number eight, which, well, Let's just say it doesn't allow for us to care for the characters as much as it probably could have for us to really feel that impact by the end. And then there's episode 9, which I am surprised is as low as it is on my list because for it to be the final episode of Star Wars Visions, I thought we'd go out with a bang, and instead, I didn't really think the story was as gripping as the visuals were. And then there's episode 3, you guys. Uh, that's the twins episode, where I thought it got better as it went on, but I almost wish they would have focused more on the twins and their story, rather than give us a little bit of a generic Star Wars angle towards the end. And then there's episode 7 by Trigger, which is a story that surrounds the Jedi Master and his Padawan visiting the Outer Rim in a desolate planet where they believe an Elder Sith Lord is hiding out. And y'all, trust me, I was all the way in on this story. Alright, listen, this episode gripped me. It was so good. But there are stronger episodes here, like my top three. I mean, those are untouchable episodes in Star Wars Visions. So at number three is episode number four by Kinema Sintras because their art style arguably is one of the best in the entire anthology series. And it's weird because the story at the beginning was a little basic and it didn't really grab me. It's a story about Separatists coming to take over this planet and this granddaughter wants to basically unseat her grandfather who's the chief of the village in order to be captured herself so her grandfather could live. It's a very selfless act, but man does this episode get better as it goes on. And by the end, I was like, my jaw was on the ground. It was so amazing. And then there's our premiere episode, episode number one, which again is set in Japan. And this art style just blew me away. But also it was this very unique story that I don't feel like we've gone often in the Star Wars universe. And my favorite episode of this series is episode number five, the ninth Jedi. Oh my gosh. I need two things from this episode. One, I need it to be developed into a miniseries or a short film, and two, I want to see Kara again in the Star Wars universe. This is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars now, and I never thought I would say that after watching a 15 minute episode. But I'll be honest with you, this story is very heartwarming by the end, and then you have some really uh, kind of serious undertones here as well. And I love the fact that episode 5 was able to blend not only a perfect, in my opinion, art style with a near perfect story. So I say all of that guys to tell you that Star Wars Visions is definitely worth your time this week on Disney+. Plus. This anthology collection really did blow away my expectations because I came into this excited but kind of unaware of what I would get and by the end I thought you know there are more than enough episodes here for me to tell you that this is a pretty good series. Now, is it a great series? No, because some of those weaker episodes were unfortunately a little too weak for me to tell you. Eh, 
you should really watch them. If anything, I think you can probably skip episode six unless you're a parent and have a young kid who's just getting into Star Wars. And episode number two is definitely skippable for me as well. But everything else, at least, is good to great. And I do think that when you sink your teeth in the Star Wars visions, it's an easy watch. You're going to come away really surprised by the unique storytelling and the amazing anime style that complements everything you're seeing on screen. So there you have it, you guys. That's my real review of Star Wars Visions. Again, there are some episodes here that I loved and I can't wait to go back and revisit with the Japanese voice track to see if it impacts me in a new way. But hey, when you do get your chance to watch it, let me know down below in the comments what you thought of Star Wars Visions, a series that again is streaming on Disney+. Plus. And if you haven't already, hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel and tap on that bell, y'all, and hit the thumbs up button if you are a big fan of the lightsaber duels here because Y'all, I need to go back and watch episode 7 and episode 1's lightsaber duel like now. It was unreal. Alrighty y'all, again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next screening. And when I catch you at the next screening, I might be $10,000 uh, poor. Hello? Yeah, oh, it went through. Wait, I'm having second thoughts about this lightsaber katana.